Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Daniel chapter 2. Did y'all see the William sisters? Yes. They did it again. Amen. Did it again. That is awesome. I'm going to sit and did it again. Awesome. Daniel chapter 2. Down at verse 20. Daniel chapter 2, down at verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and I praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might. You have now made known to me what we ask of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. Please be seated. But as you're taking this seat, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, today's sermon title is a change is going to come. Look on the other side and say, neighbor, a change is going to come. Amen. Amen. When I was a little boy, actually a teenager, I was about 13, 14 years old, I can remember being in a discussion with my parents about the music of my day. And I distinctly remember my daddy telling me that songs from his time had meaning. I will never forget that. He said that when a singer wrote a song back in his day, that it would reflect something personal, something real, something tangible, something that the songwriter actually had experienced. And they would write it in a way so that the listener could feel the same way. You see, Jerome, my, my, my daddy played the tenor saxophone in the band, and so he loved all types of music. But his favorite type of music, of course, was rhythm and blues. So I can remember my sisters and I sitting with my daddy in the living room on that plastic that kept it clean despite who sat on it, kept it dry no matter what kind of hair touched it. I can remember sitting on that plastic, not one or two, but just he would bring us in there while he would be thumbing through his eight tracks and those 45s and playing them on that old wood stereo in the corner. The one that required a dime to play those records. I remember that, I, re I remember that. I remember that he would, he would play a little bit of the Drifters. He would run a little bit of the Temptations. I can remember hearing the Four Tops, Percy Sledge, James Brown, Otis Redding, Smokey Robinson. Uh, the list went on and on, and, and just to keep my mama happy, he would play a little bit of the Supremes or even some Marvin Gaye. You understand? You understand? He said the songs from his time had meaning. They meant something. Songs from his time had meaning. And so I, 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 I was remembering this one day. As I put pen to pad, I thought about one of his favorite songs. And I decided to challenge this theory. So I wanted to look it up and see what this song meant. And so I discovered this about his favorite song. You see, in 1963, after this artist heard a Caucasian songwriter by the name of Bob Dylan at a concert in North Carolina.
sing a song called Blowing in the Wind. A young man by the name of Sam Cook left that concert, went across the way, and he sat down with a group of white civil rights activists and some college students that were preparing to have a rally. And notice this, he, he sat there for hours talking to them and helping them plan a rally. Sam Cook got up in that conversation and he headed towards his tour bus because he had just noticed that there were white people more involved in the civil rights movement than himself. He went inside of his tour bus and he wrote the lyrics to a song called A Change Is Gonna Come. This is one of my daddy's favorite songs. You see, the, the song not only spoke of the racism that existed during the early 60s, but it also reflected the inner turmoil that Sam Cooke had dealt with. That first turmoil being the death of his 18-month-old son from an accidental drowning. And the second term of all being the, the fact that just when he thought that he was over his son's death, he was ready to go back to work, he was ready to start touring again, him and his, his, his band, they stopped in Louisiana. They tried to check into a hotel. They didn't realize it was a whites-only motel, and they got arrested. This is too much for a young man to deal with. And so during this time, so he begged for change. And so if you listen, if you actually sat and listened to this song, you can hear it in the lyrics. Both of these incidents can be found sprinkled throughout the song. Listen, I, I was born by the river in a little town. And oh, just like that river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know, make you want to sing, don't I? <laughs> it's been hard, it's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die, because I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, long time coming. But I know a change don't come. Now I go to the movie and I go downtown, but somebody keep telling me, don't hang around. It's been a long, long time coming. But I know a change don't come. Then I go to my brother. And I say, brother, help me, please. But well, somehow he winds up knocking me back down on my knees. Oh, there have been times that I thought I wouldn't last for long. But now I think I'm able to carry on. And he finished off and said, it's been a long. Go ahead, I know y'all want to. Long time coming. But I know change gonna come. Y'all gonna help me this one. All right. Now, I can tell you something, though. That the change that Sam Cooke was thinking about is still rings true today. That there, there, there's somebody in here, you're, you're looking for change in your life. You're looking for deliverance in your life. You're looking for resolve in your life. A, a pure change, a, a real change, a change that can only come from the hand of God. And I just pray, I just pray that someone, some, somewhere that you, that you hear that change, that you hear from God to this text today. Because change is going to come. Have I got your attention yet? Yeah? Can I give you some Bible? The key figure in the writer of this text is Daniel. This is one of the last of the prophetical words penned in the Old Testament. It's an unusual book because it is written mostly in the Hebrew. However, the first few chapters are written in Arabic. By the time of this writer, 
Judah and King Jehoiakim have been conquered by Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar has decreed that the temple should be destroyed and the, and the gold should be removed from Jerusalem and relocated down in Shinar. And the gifted young men should be repatriated back to where they came from. In other words, they should be sent back to their country that they were born in, to their country of their original citizenship. Israel is under siege of a government that is foreign. They had to learn a new language, the language of the Chaldean people. They've been depressed. They've been deflated. They've been destroyed. They've been decimated. And they've been de-armed. They, they no longer even have the inspiration of the temple to make them feel special. You know what? That, that, that captivity is bad when you're on foreign soil. But captivity can be worse when you're on your own home ground. And captivity can still be even worse when you're in another land and your mind is on your own homeland. But captivity is nothing new to some of us in here. It's not a new concept because you too are being held captive. You're captive by a house that, that, that gives you the blues. You're, 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 you're captive by a job that gives you the blues. You're, you're captive by a relationship that gives you the blues. Sometimes you feel like giving up. Sometimes you feel like throwing in the towel. Sometimes you feel like throwing it all away. Sometimes you feel like you're all by yourself, that life is closing in on you. You don't know why all this is happening to you. And so the question becomes, where is God? I thought that he loved me. I thought that he cared about me. Where is God? Why would he let me go through so much pain and turmoil and hurt like this? Where is God? Why is all this happening to me? Why does all this trouble seem to last past all the way? Why, why do people keep on picking on me? Why am I going through this? Why am I feeling like this? You said on the end, you lost all hope. You said on the end, you, you've let your circumstance get the best of you. You, you said on the end, you'd rather go along than to speak your mind. You, you said on the end, you, you'd rather let the enemy has come in and taken over your situation. It made you feel like you're in a rut that you'll never be able to climb out of. But hold on, because today you might hear some good news. Some good news. He says, don't give up now. Don't throw in the towel just yet. Don't give up because God knows what you are going through. And God can change your circumstance. God heard Sam Cook way back then. And he's hearing you now. And a change is going to come. I know it may seem far away by now. But a change is going to come. But God says to us that a change is going to come. God knows that you are dealing with the storm. He knows that you are dealing with issues. He knows you are going through a situation, but God won't let you stay there. God knows the pressure that you are under. God knows what you are dealing with. God knows what she said to you. God knows what he said to you. God knows what your children are going through. God knows what you are dealing with. And he said the change is going to come. Change is going to come. A change is going to come. So if you're writing with me, I need you to write this down. It says, God can change circumstances. I hope you haven't closed your Bible yet. Because right there in verse 2, King Nebuchadnezzar had a sleeping problem. Some of us are here have sleeping problems. Staying up till two, three, four in the morning. Not because you're not sleepy. Not because you're not tired. But because your mind, your dreams, like King Nebuchadnezzar, have been disturbed. His dreams have been disturbed. And he won't answer to what is going on and why he can't sleep at night. 
the psychics and the advisors and the counselors have no idea. And in his rage, he threatens to even kill those Hebrew refugees, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Some of which, the refugees of which their names had been changed. Because Shadrach's real name was Hananiah. Meshach's real name was Meshach. And Abednego's real name was Azariah. Some of us can relate to this because our circumstances and our issues and our situations have changed our names. It used to be called happy. It used to be called sweet. It used to be called nice. It used to be called faithful. It used to be called giving. It used to be called a baby. It used to be called honey dip. It used to be called sugar. It used to be called husband. It used to be called wife. It used to be called employed. It used to be called a rich. But there's some circumstances that have come in and changed your name. They, 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 they now call you bad news. They, they now call you sorry. They, they now call you neighborhood drunk. They, they now call you SOB. They now call you low down. He can change 
those circumstances, your issue, your situation. Anybody ready for change? Come on, somebody. Give me your name and say, God can change my circumstances. Oh, but number two. Number two. God can change people. Anybody ever deal with people? Look at verse 21. Because Daniel says that God also has people under control. Now this particular text, I don't want to steer you wrong, is this particular text, it applies to authority figures. It's actually talking about kings and, and, and queens. It's actually talking about government. All right? but, but the principle is still the same. Because across this nation, those who were once considered leaders are now fading to the background. Uh, across this nation, there, there seems to be this season of transition. God is moving people. God is moving ministries. And God is moving churches. And God is moving preachers from the, from the background to the foreground. And God says, I, I, I remove kings and, and, I, and I set up kings. This is a word of, of transition. Removing and setting up are transitional words. It doesn't suggest that the current kings are, are bad kings, but it does suggest that God operates on a timetable. When I was in the seventh grade, I, I played football for this coach named Grady Brown. And, and, and I was young and influential, and Grady said, if you stay in line and you keep in line, you'll always make it to the front of the line. Makes sense. So, 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 so as long as I was living, I, I used to live by that. I just stay in line. I just keep in line. Eventually, I'll get to the front. It made sense. But as I got older, I realized God doesn't operate on a linear system. And just because you're in line does not mean that God is obligated to use you. Yeah, yeah, I had two friends back in high school. You can tell by their lifestyle, by my lifestyle, that they were, they were destined for ministry. But they fell to the wayside. Now listen, both, both of them accepted Christ way before I did. Both were working in the church way before I was. Both they attended church way, way, <laughs> way more than I did. Both were much smarter than I am, much more articulate than I am, both were more knowledgeable than I am, both were more charismatic than I am, but, but somehow, God has used me. I, I can't explain it. I, I, I can't define it. I, I, I can't explain it. I can't define it. I, I don't know, but God has used me. So, so, some, of you, some of us people in here, we're, we're hidden treasures. And somebody here just should testify to the fact that you, you weren't the smartest on the job. You, you weren't the best looking in your class. You weren't the most impressive at the interview. You, you weren't the most credit worthy down there at the bank. You, you, you were the one with the, with the kids, the, the house note, the, the, the car payment, and, and nobody but yourself to count on. But, but, but can I tell you something? Thanks be to God. Uh, he, he changes people. He allows the last to be first, and the, and the first to be last. He allows the, the Leahs to, to go before the Rachels. He allows the, the Jacobs to go before the Esau. He allows the, the shepherd boy.
Because I have some behavioral traits that have always stayed the same. You may not understand my ways, but they are my ways. God said that I'm the God who gives out double portions. Some of us just live out the portion, but, but this is good news because notice, he gives to those who already have. This is not anything to do with money or creature comforts or credit cards. It has to do with operational tools. But needed to work in the kingdom. Come on, somebody. To those who already have wisdom, he gives more wisdom. Remember, wisdom comes first from God. And God says, I will lay wisdom on top of wisdom. To those who already have understanding, he gives more understanding. God says, I will grant you knowledge on top of your understanding. Now listen, that sounds just like God to me. From what I know of him, that sounds just like God to me. You see, he's generous, but then he's sloppy. He's generous because he's so giving. He's so loving. He's so caring. He's so kind. He's sloppy because he gives me more than I can handle, so it runs over. You know what I think about that? David said, my cup running over. Now listen, listen. Why would he give me too much that spills over? Because I don't think it's just for me. I think it's for the people around me as well. Come on, somebody. I thought somebody else would shout. Because if I got too much to handle, I got to give it away. I, growing up, I didn't even realize. But now I do. So I got to close by asking this question. Is there anybody in here that's glad that your blessing is on his way? Oh, I thought I'd get more shots than that. Is there anybody out here that's glad that God got a blessing headed your way? The devil's causing a problem in our lives. I've been due for change all so long. I'm so glad that I can say that I'm going to be like Job. I'm going to wait until my change comes. I'm so glad that my change is on its way. My season is about to come. My time is about to draw near. Is there anybody in here that's happy today? Because your change is going to come. It's time to celebrate, church. It's time to give God the praise. It's time to give God the glory. It's not my turn. It's my time.